All right. Hi, everybody. I'm back. Oh, let's see. Is everything working? Yes. Can I see somebody here on LinkedIn? A few people are coming in. All right. Very nice. Do me a favor. Say a quick hello on YouTube and on LinkedIn in the chat. So I know that somebody is here and that everything is working, that you can hear me right. And just a quick hello. And then we're going to get into it. It's another week. I hope your week ended as well as mine. Um, I, as week, I actually wanted to get back here on Friday, but on Friday, I totally forgot that I was invited to a birthday. So <laughs> I actually needed to go. Um, Omar is back here. Hey, Omar. Malik. Hi. Ankit. Hello. Suraya and uh, Prabhu and also a hola LinkedIn user. Hi. Yeah. Um, hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great start of the week. Um, if you're in the US, you're just starting out. If you're in India, then oh, it's already almost end of the day. Today, we are going to talk about Two things mainly, and as well as your questions, whatever you have in questions, put them in the chat. I'm going to answer them as always. I have one thing that I want to look at is there's a, um, a, a website that's called State of Data 2023. Um, and they did polls about data engineering for data engineers. Um, what's in the data space going on and they actually contacted me when they set this up if i want to add a quick uh or my, my opinion quickly and they put it as well in i just i couldn't get to it sooner so let's start with that let's jump right in hello everybody i can see even more people here awesome um let's let's dive right in let's dive right in let me bring it up and then yeah, that, that's one thing. And the other thing is today we're also going to talk about an AWS architecture. Very interesting architecture I found. They have that on their YouTube channel. We're going to analyze this. Um, it is about voting for talent shows. So they set up an AWS infrastructure where you can vote for talent shows. Super cool. I always find stuff like that interesting. So we're going to have a look at that as well. So, all right. Let's dive into the state of data 2023. So um, the idea with this is they had 886 respondents and that was um, yeah, basically, uh, did they also tell, yeah, they about the geography that they were saying here, 33% were North, can I make this even bigger? 33% ah, were North America. Um, 28 Europe, like me, and uh, 26 Asia, and then South Af uh, South America, Oceanica, Africa, and re remote. Very interesting. <laughs> On the ISS or something? I don't know. <laughs> so, um, uh, six six sixty six. No, 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 <laughs> not six six six. Um, so experience. And that's the that's interesting part is okay what who who actually answered to this um experience three to five years 32 percent six to ten years 27 so there are there are a lot of also senior people in here and 11 plus 21 percent so over 40 percent rough almost 50 percent are people with a lot of experience that actually answered all this um company size most people work in small companies. Ah, my mouse is again at you. Let me, let me get my mouse into this. All right. Um, 110 people, no, between 11 and 110 people, 28%. So 
startup small companies, then 27 until 101 to 500. So still reasonably small companies, not that big enterprises. Um, that's where a lot of stuff happening. It's a lot of stuff happening in the startups, in the small business or smaller business space. So let's let's keep that in mind. Although yes, a thousand people, a oh, thousand plus people is twenty four percent. So there are also people from corporations in here. Um, team size, I think that's the the typical thing. <laughs> 21% is two to three people. Unfortunately, that's the that's the typical thing, right? Think about what you the t your team like post in the chat here. How big is your team size? Just the number to get a quick quick idea. Two to three, six to ten, thirty plus, uh, four to five. Like, what's what's the team size? I I'm guessing you're also in this. Um, and the smaller team size where a lot of stuff is happening. And I think also that fits very well to the company size that we've seen, right? Smaller teams, smaller companies, also smaller teams, very narrow um, use cases. So that is, I'm guessing, first one says 20 to uh, 30 people. Oh, that's already big, um, big teams. 20 plus, nice, nice, okay. There then the team management gets very interesting. <laughs> very nice. Um, yeah, and here's why I think this is so interesting for us data engineers, right? We were, we were talking about team size, company size and so on. Current roles. From 886 uh, uh, response, 38% said data engineer. 12 software engineer management, what's that? E, E, E something, 21%. So there are a lot of engineers under here um, who are actually, who've answered this, which I find very, very interesting. Let me see, can I make this somehow bigger without losing something? Oh man. I would have liked to show you more, but as you can see, then we're losing the right side here. Ah, oh, that's very well optimized, not. So we, we need to we need to keep it like this. I'm trying to explain this a bit, but as that ain't data engineer, very interesting. Um, half of the response are not hiring. 17% are hiring aggressively. I think that's a bit depending on the time. I don't know exactly when they ran this. If they ran this earlier this year, <laughs> could have been problematic, right? Uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the economy and people were let go in big. So, hmm. but yeah. Although, yes, 31% said yes, one to two data people they're hiring. And then, yeah, again here, no, we're small, 23%, no, hiring freeze, 20 So, doors are wide open, yes, did not answer, no, there were layoffs, recent layoffs. So, 3, 4%, uh, four five six seven so 47 percent are not hiring yeah it's yeah, it's a big big number all right so let's now that we know who answered this let's get more into the details of what did they answer so um ex is that still compensation trends oh that was compensation more experience correlates with more pay okay that I, i'm come on what are we talking about here? That should be normal, right? That you have more experience, you get more pay. So, yeah. The interesting part here is though um, the max and the average that you see here. So the with one to two years of experience, the max is 196 and the average is only 46. 
thousand US dollars. With three to four, 70 is the average and 300 is the max. Six to 10 years, $500,000 and 112 is the, the average. My guess is that has something to do with the location and because 300 is very high right and the and the uh the average is only 70 then in the us the the um man the income or the compensation is a lot higher than in the eu or in any other country so us we saw how much how much um was north america 33 percent and then europe 28 and asia 26 so the asia and europe have lower ones than the us so that's why the average is that low right so very interesting if you see posts like from zach wilson hey i made five hundred thousand as a engineer and that is not normal if you're living in the eu <laughs> forget about it <laughs> it's, it's not going to happen but yeah so i who's from no, who, who can understand this who sees this as well put one in the chat if you see this as well like i think that is a very obvious thing yeah so 11 plus the interesting part here 11 plus years 600,000 nice okay company size larger companies correlate with more pay in north america pays far more than uh, anywhere else what i was saying matt is agreeing here matt matt is agreeing yeah cash compensation again in the eu i think the this here this this numbers here the average numbers for the eu are good very good numbers are good numbers i can absolutely as a beginner 46 it's not not high but i would say that is that is absolutely bang on average three to five years as a as a uh, professional seventy thousand, maybe 75 but that i think that's the like coming from a corporation um coming from big corp that's the standard here six to ten years if you're good 112 reasonable doable i'd say six years right but it's nowhere near the 500 that we see in the us uh what we company size company size as you can see company size is mostly not very interesting here the interesting part is in the and i'm i'm the purple one here for me that's the us the purple one here 150,000 for large uh, smaller companies that makes sense that makes sense very very small startups still in search for funding yes um but then that's that's the the one to a hundred that's the typical startup bracket and yeah then the bigger ones thousand plus people <laughs> you know who's in there amazon netflix uh airbnb and so on and so on uh uber all the apple all the big companies who can allow themselves to pay this that's why this is 600 here for the thousand people 100 percent. but the average when you look at the average that's the interesting part in this the average and i'm always thinking from the european side right is pretty stable 77 for 10 or less 80 for 11 to 100 80 for 100 to 500 87 for 500 to 1000 92 for 1000 plus very stable so from a from a compensation standpoint the the if you if you lose the layers the or the 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 how's it called the breakout ones who are working at netflix and amazon uh, and so on well amazon i don't actually know but you know what i mean 
at Fang, like Facebook most likely as well. Um, yeah, they are it, the numbers are different. Cash compensation versus location. Oh, okay. So there are a few with here, with two hundred in Europe, but yeah, I think we North America. North America. Uh, interestingly enough here, the Asia one that it's so high with 500. Interesting. Wouldn't have thought this. Nice. Very nice. It's a lot better than in Europe. <laughs> yeah. If you're in, if you're in Europe, um, it, it, it's hard in Europe. It's hard. It's, dif it's very difficult in here. Um, yeah. So let, let's let's move on. Data tooling inside now. Okay, this again, as you can see here, source Airbyte. The guys from Airbyte did this. So that's um, just as a background. This is not paid or anything. They just add, they showed me this. They said, Andreas, do you want to add a few cents um, as as an influencer? And I said, yeah, this is interesting. So I added something. This is. Not a paid thing, not a paid thing. Okay, so data tooling insights, um, Airbyte and Fivetran are clear leaders for data ingestion layer. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Airbyte, the in the I, th I guess the good thing with Airbyte is that it's uh, so easy to um, to extend and that they have a lot of features. Uh, and the community is working on it. Fivetran, I think, is more old schooly, right? Well, yeah, for data ingestion, Airbyte is is uh, is the leader here. The, then they had they, I'm so data ingestion means you have data laying somewhere around, and you want to get it into your pipeline. So this might be an ETL uh, job that you need to start where you then transform a bit of data and then put it in a warehouse or something, right? And that was the that was the idea between this. We can also do here company size. So let's add our yeah, it's it's always the same. Add location in Europe. No, it's quite boring. <laughs> Extra poll. Uh, people care most about correctness, stability, performance of data integration performance of course but i mean performance very high what is this 37 percent as i say performance 19 percent say ease of use numbers of connectors i mean numbers of connectors is always important because to be able to integrate other platforms you need to have the right amount of um of connectors if you want to connect to a cert to snowflake there needs to be a snowflake if you need to connect to a um to a certain i don't know sql database to to yeah, then you need to go there if you need to connect to a uh no sql database it's a work right um Lois says andreas What's up, Lois? So, yeah, but the the most ones here, correctness and stability, that's what the most people said. Um, or that's what, what people um, say is very high. So, I'm sorry, that was the bing from my windows. It wants me to restart. Extra poll, uh, more than 30% of teams maintain more than Oops, more more than ten connectors, but fifty zero to five connectors are actually thirty seven thirty seven percent. Sorry for not showing it. So that means a lot of people just get in there. They set this tool up. They have a very distinct use case with. I mean, one to five connectors most likely is just a source database and a destination. And maybe some things, some some um, data lake in between, or where the data is also flowing, but yeah, 
six to ten well six to ten twenty five percent so interesting then dbt uh, dbt uh, has most positive sentiment for data transformation but pandas is actually most used i think this is a bit oranges to apples comparison right dbt very very good if you want to do some elt jobs if you're transforming data in for instance snowflake if you do some data warehousing but pandas is of course this is more often used you have a, what do you need for pandas you need a computer you need to have uh, python installed and then you can use pandas and do something with pandas so that's why uh, i think it's, it's clear that pandas is so high here um actually most use is pandas is it yeah, yeah, yeah using here the green one is is uh, is the highest so yeah although when you see here dbt want to try out is 216 out of 880 and what's that no that's heard of yeah heard of is 152 so interesting um what did daniel say here daniel daniel beach said here who's daniel beach let's quickly look at daniel daniel beach senior data engineer ripple shot okay um said uh, so follow daniel here on linkedin Eleven thousand followers he can eat a few he can use a few followers uh there are a few things that i find surprising and exciting about the state of data survey firstly i'm surprised of example that pandas is still leading the pack for data transformations <laughs> Mm -hmm. this is not so surprising to me this is also so exciting because it points to a need of continued education and development around new tools like polars which has a lot to offer i've never heard about that uh, i find it surprising databricks isn't used more but also has a bright side in the idea that there is a lot of room and or growth towards those tools both from an educational perspective content creator and then it points to still exciting times ahead for data engineering uh, well the thing is so yes when we talk about spark are people using spark a lot the thing with spark is spark is not used is or is not making sense for everyone spark makes sense if you have a lot of data if you're streaming data through if you have a certain amount of infrastructure and need for for processing for simple jobs for simple etl process for uh, simple things you would not use spark like a simple streaming job you don't need to use spark go on aws get yourself a kinesis message queue get yourself a lambda function and then process the data and put it somewhere so that's why spark is still is still niche as the niche for people who really need it so it, it's it's not going never going to be as high as pandas uh, or dbt but yeah i'm looking 488 to 469 so it's very close dbt and pandas that also shows you that also shows you where the industry is heading i would say if you use dbt then you most likely are going to work with elt you're going to work with a data warehouse it could also be databricks could also could be snowflake could be azure uh how is it called on azure I forgot how it's called on azure could be redshift like but this is mostly the thing so a lot of people are working now that the numbers are so high for uh, for dbt you already get the idea where what people are working on or working towards towards the warehouse towards elt towards analytics and not towards transactions towards the main use case of a of a platform 
Oh, hopefully you understand what I mean by that. So that's a that's a, in, an interesting thing here. Then what do we have? Snowflake BigQuery Cleary at the top of the data warehouse, a synapse. Synapse. Um, behind badly, we're synapse here. Redshift, synapse. Oh, okay. Synapse, the, the, the bright green one is, is very small. Yeah. Snowflake and BigQuery. I mean, a lot of people use BigQuery just because it's so easy to use. Snowflake is also easy to use. It's not a, not a big, um, not a big surprise here. Data orchestration. Uh, most people are still using self-hosted Airflow, but Daxter is coming up the ranks. Yeah, self-hosted Airflow. Yeah. What says Mark uh, from Astronomer? Um, uh, it's unsurprising to find uh, Astronomer actually is, uh, and I have a maybe a cooperation with them soon, um, and a, a, basically a video about that. Um, it's unsurprising to find data quality as the number one concern for data. Uh, okay, that's not based on this. Uh, I found it all out interesting to see that most people are widely using self-hosted Airflow while we heard that Airflow is very difficult to set up. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. It's not easy to set up, easy to maintain. I'm, I'm guessing people still like to do it on their own or setting up it quickly, but stuff like Astronomer or also AWS, they have a, a managed service for Airflow. These things make sense, and I think that's the, more towards the future to have this uh, as a managed solution. I believe the choice between self-hosted and managed Airflow in the future will be more on what those managed solutions bring to quickly onboard teams. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you need to, because with that, you are going to, you, you don't need to have that amount of um, space or you're let, let's say this way you're not binding resources on the setup on the maintenance of the tools itself but you can use them as the um as the actual yeah, development resources a better dev experience help solve quality observability issues i mean standard airflow is good but i can absolutely see like mark from astronomer they're adding more features on top of these of these tools so that's why um that absolutely makes sense and that's why a lot of people are moving towards it it's the same thing like with snowflake right um or let's say databricks or let's let's say databricks um are you going to host spark on a cluster yourself or are you going to just say uh Let's not, let's forget about this. Let's not manage this on our own. Let's just get Databricks and be done with it. Right. And that's the, that's the way I see where all of this is heading. Okay, then what we have, BI tools, Looker, Tableau are still running. Like, I mean, Looker and Tableau are the, the big ones. Um, Power BI also very often used nothing nothing to write home about here data quality uh as you see it's still i mean great expectations is the one that everybody's looking at but it's like it still could be more i think data quality is still still not as high on the on the uh, agenda for a lot of people so yeah what is Ravid saying here by the way Ravid here give Ravid a follow Ravid is doing a great job with the Ravid show uh, he's bringing on people and talking about data and uh, yeah he's most likely already posted here is already doing a, a live stream again and like Ravid's doing a really is doing a great job so props to Ravid Give Ravid a follow. I'm particularly happy to see the growth of data quality tools that have developed, 
for good. The signal's maturity is coming along. It's not a shocker to me. Airbyte's still leading the way uh, for the data ingestion layer here. Yeah. Yeah. Reverse ETL. I mean, I'm not a big reverse ETL guy, so let's jump over this. By the way, if you want to look at that um, state here, state of data, it just I, I think when you Google state of data 2020, uh, 2023, you most likely are going to find it directly here. Uh, here, no? Uh, oh, that doesn't have a good ranking. Oh, okay. So you you can find it at state minus off minus data dot com. I actually forgot to post it in the in the description of the video, so uh, I'm going to have to um, yeah have to link this later. Or well, let me just I'm going to post quickly post this on my Twitter. I'm going to quickly post this on Twitter. My Andreas K, Twitter, state of data. Yep. So that's this. And then afterwards, we're going to watch this YouTube video. So let's just put this in here as well. Architecture video of the street. Okay, um, sorry for that. So let's move on. So again, on my my Twitter, you can find me here, Andreas. Just use Andreas. Kutz. I actually have here. I have the, the blue check mark. Take my money, Elon. So um, is there something else interesting here? That guy. What, what did that idiot write here, Andreas Kretz? Uh, amazing data engineering survey. And I really like this. I didn't just say this. I recommend checking out the insights into adoption of engineering tools from data ingestion, transformation to reverse ETL, and data catalogs. Data catalogs, I think, is coming. Uh, that's what I think is, is also super interesting. The section was my highlight. Yep. Congratulations to Airbyte for leading data in, uh, ingestion section. Yep. Um, data catalog, oh, I actually I almost jumped over it. I think data catalog, that is something that is going to be more used soon. Right now, data catalogs are still in that section where, uh, do we really need a data catalog? Is this something? Um, who needs that? What would this bring us? But the more people work with very diverse sources of data, especially on the data lake, where Data gets dropped here and there and everywhere, and you never know what's going to have what's what's going on. That's the thing. So that's very important. Um, the data catalog can help you a lot. Like with AWS, the data catalog they actually don't have that in here, where you have a crawler. That crawler crawls your data lake and then finds you the structures of the data and actually catalogs this. So these things I think are still. Not a lot of people use it, right? Um, what's the biggest one here? What did they say? Data and catalogs, data hub. Edmundsen are leading for now, but the vast majority of the market is also up for grabs. I think if you're on AWS, most likely you're using the Glue data catalog. So that's missing here. I don't know if they didn't didn't ask for this, but yeah. So that's that's very interesting, and you can see that it's it's not it's not. Uh, it's not a big thing, so the, the market is very open. There's going to be a lot of movement here. Then what they had, survey here, um, survey towards data science, the best, best newsletters, towards data science, data engineering weekly, um, Seattle data guy, Ben, who's also added a comment here. He's doing also great work. So check out Ben, um, Ben Rogerjean. 
follow him here on LinkedIn and also his Seattle Data Guy YouTube channel. Does he have, I think that leads to his consulting page. Ah, I thought this would, would lead to his YouTube. Um, Seattle Data Guy on YouTube, give him a follow. Great dude, we've been chatting a few times um, in the background, doing really great videos. I think last time I also reacted to a video of his. Yeah, um, then we had podcasts, data engineering podcast. I actually don't know this one. I think I looked, at, I don't remember uh, some time ago. Um, yeah, there are a few ones, Data Talks Club, very interesting as well. And then YouTube channels. Here also they had Seattle Data Guy um, as the, the with 19%, but also here with small 9%. That's also here. Yours truly, me. Um, I'm also here. So makes me very happy um, to be here in this list. Put one in the chat if you know my YouTube channel, if you're on a LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn, one if you know the YouTube channel, Two, if not, then I'm going to quickly go to the YouTube channel and show you my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, because we're also streaming here on YouTube, right? Like Omar is also here on YouTube. Um, and the comments I'm, I'm taking also from YouTube and from LinkedIn. We have communities. I think communities is very difficult. Uh, the Airbyte Slack here and the Airbyte YouTube channel. I think that it's very like, You know, eh, it's right, right. But yeah. Um, so that far, um, that much that is, um, that's that. Uh, Mark, I actually, I actually forgot to, like Mark is asking, is there a link to this dashboard? I forgot to put this in the description, but if you go to my Twitter, I just, while we were talking, I Twittered this. So when you go to my, just search me, Andreas Kreitz on Twitter, um, you're going to, I have a blue check mark, you're going to find me. And I put this on here uh, five minutes ago as, the, as a link, because you know me, I already forgot it. So put this in, uh, get this here. And now then, let's quickly talk about this. Anybody, uh, let's, Let's talk about your comments. Um, like, is there something that you find interesting that you or what I have shown you here? Um, is that something? Is there something where you say, oh, that was really, really surprising? Uh, that would be super interesting to talk about. Um, Mark, maybe you have seen something while you were here uh, and, and watching this. Somebody else. Um, let me know if you like, what was surprising for you? For me, now that I, that I looked at it again, the, the pandas DBT thing was very interesting. Um, it was very interesting that actually DBT is high, uh, pandas is higher than DBT. And, but I think we can, we, 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 I was able to, uh, to explain why I guessing this is, uh, what are you seeing about the mindset of using GPUs for speeding up data processing? Mark, I'm, I, I think that's for, let's say it like this for the normal engineering workflows. I see this very as niche product right now or as a niche solution. Um, when we talk about having this for, um, for machine learning, for training of algorithms, it's, uh, this should be standard for, for these use cases. I mean, you can only win if you have GPU instances and train on the GPU. Does anybody train still train on, on CPUs? I, I almost don't think so. I remember back at, uh, at my old job, uh, I don't know, many years ago, we switched to GPU. So, but for, um, for normal processing, I don't, I don't think so. 
it would be interesting to see an overview of query processing times. I, I don't think, I don't think you would see a big difference of uh, processing times because these, um, GPUs for machine learning are very good because what they can do best is a simple um, matrix multiplications, right? Um, and that's that's the that's the st really strong suit of uh, GPUs because they are coming from a, a visual thing where they uh, where they calculated pixels and their um, or, or yeah pixels and their uh, actual location in the 3D space and so on. And they needed to do a bit of uh, like very simple multiplications, um, which on a, on a, on a huge scale, right? So I, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. There are big optimization CPUs can give you on Spark 3.0 as well. I don't know. My feeling is that for 99.9% .9 of the jobs, it's not going to make a difference. It's my, my, my feeling, but I don't have any numbers for this. So Mark, if you have any links for this or any, any benchmarks, somehow it always saying my connection isn't as good today is some guys, let me know. Is the stream okay today or is the stream quality not good? That would be interesting because I I don't like, I don't fully get it. Something is going on here with my, with my software. Okay, Mark's adding it. Ah, I can't copy it out. Let me see, can I get this from here? Can I get this from the LinkedIn comments here directly in LinkedIn? Somehow this, it doesn't show up here. Let me see. Ah, LinkedIn and this comment system. So Mark, I'm going to, I'm going to check that out later. Um, I can't get to it, but the quality is, is the quality of the stream good? No issues, says Omar. Okay. The quality of the video is not great. Even when I set to 1080p. Oh, says Felipe. Okay. Um, I'm going to re upload this after our stream because I have the high quality here and I'm going to re upload this. I have the feeling there is something fishy. Windows was saying is, is Windows doing some updates and downloading some updates, it seems like. So I have the feeling Windows is messing something up here. All right. That much for this. So the other thing I wanted to what? I'm plugged in. So it's let me let me quickly see here. What's the what's the task manager saying here? Come on, task manager. Okay, CPU is saying 70 per 68 percent CPU here. What's using some? Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Why is this? Okay, Chrome because it's streaming OBS. Nothing out of the ordinary. Um, Ethernet. Like I'm, I'm not using, I don't know what's going on. Everything seems fine. So let's watch uh, something. I, what I said in the beginning, um, I wanted to look today at a data architecture and I've already scanned through it so that there are no ad breaks in this and yeah so i want to look at this today because in this what they do is they have the use case that's from an italian tv company and in italy they have a show where 
they are doing like it's it's like a talent show i think for kids they they're they're saying and what they're doing is they created a aws infrastructure for this use case where at the end of each round you can vote for groups of people there i think groups of, of children or, or something they're going to tell us this and in this they build the aws infrastructure to actually then get these votes from phone from website sms and so on get them in and then um, register them and uh, analyze the results so they know who actually who won right so let's watch this this is something i actually want to watch with you and then this also later goes on as a separate stream uh, as a separate video let's let's just check it out together um i'm going to add my comments here and um you can add your comments let's see what what we find out let's see what we think is uh, interesting in here welcome to this is my architecture i am han and today i'm joined by marco from mediaset welcome thank you for having me tell us about mediaset well, mediaset is italy top free broadcaster we have uh, an average share of 40 percent on our linear channels and more than 10 million views on our digital channels daily okay so it's a it's a large tv company or tv station 40 percent market share <laughs> okay okay that's that's nice um, let me know if the audio is good or if i should um make it a bit louder So what problem are you trying to solve today? Uh, I, I'm, I think it's already well, our most not loud enough. of 40% Let me see. on our linear channels and more than 10 million views on our digital channels daily. So what problem are you trying to solve? I think I messed it up. Oh, man. Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I am Han, and today I'm joined by Marco from Mediaset. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay. Million views on our digital channels daily. Awesome. So what problem are you trying to solve today? Well, our most top, our top talent show is Amici, which is a, um, a, a game where a, a classroom of teenagers compete one against the other by dancing and acting to win a prize. During the final episode of the show, the winner is chosen by the public via a voting system. Uh, last year, we had the need to withstand a load, an, incre uh, an increased load in traffic in number of votes. We expected a higher load and we had expected a very spiky pattern. So we decided to rebuild the infrastructure from scratch using AWS services in order to withstand this load. Okay, so they are, they had this on premise. You know how it is, people. <laughs> when they say on the on the tv now it's time to vote everybody's jumping on everybody's starting to vote and then if your infrastructure cannot scale it's going to it's going to break down it's the typical thing that's why scaling is so important and how they, did they do this they moved from on-premise to um to aws that's a kids show so very interesting i actually i don't know this because like italy no idea dive in yeah of course so the first step is open a session so the show is broadcast from an on-prem so we have an on-prem system that uh, is being used by editorial teams to open the session this command is routed through a vpn and goes to an uh, ecs service on fargate this service is not uh, accessible on the public network and its responsibility is to open the session on memory db so it's so let's quickly go here so on the right here on the let me see so on the right here here's your um here's your tv station here's the broadcasting station or the the like where they create the broadcast 
And what I think what he means by opening the session is um, they say, okay, now the the uh, showcase part of this or the, the competition part of the show on in our studio is over. Now let's start the voting. And then uh, that information then gets locked or stored in memory DB in Redis because it's, Redis is very fast, especially if it's in memory, right? That's very good for scaling for short bursts of, of data. And then the voting is open. Having VPN here it's a standard thing, very good practice, because through that VPN, you actually can create the connection from your company network into your AWS network, right? So that's why they have the VPN part here. Network and its responsibility is to open the session on MemoryDB. MemoryDB is being used to store who the contestants are in a specific voting session. Mm -hmm. Cool. So let's just say I'm ready to vote. What happens? Yeah. So, so the, the contestants are in the memory in, in the memory DB in Redis. And then the votes for each contestant are then uh, going to be put in. The user has to choose from uh, several different channels that we allow him to use to vote. And we have SMS, we have mobile application, both iOS and Android. Okay. We have websites and we also have connected TVs. Once the user so very broad thing, right? SMS, apps, connected TVs, like websites, the very, very broad way of, of getting votes. It's as authenticated on this platform, and he has chosen who he wants to vote, he will transmit his vote intention. Uh, the first issue that we need to solve is uh, being sure that users outside of Italy cannot vote. We use WAF to perform this check. So the votes come into WAF, and uh, uh, we make sure that the location of the users is valid. Although, why are they? I mean, why are they doing this? W what's the reason behind this? Is this so that people don't use some botnets to vote or something? How? Like, what does it matter if you're watching Italian TV in Germany and you want to vote for that? For, for that contestant. Uh, like, what could be the reason for this to then narrow it down to the Italian, I'm guessing IP address or something. No idea, no idea why they're doing this, but yeah. After that, the users go through ALB and reaches a front-end service on Fargate. The service is completely separate from the back-end service that we talked about earlier. And these two components are obviously being used to withstand the spiky load pattern that we expect. Fargate is being scaled with uh, an auto-scaling policies and with the scheduled policies of auto-scaling to make sure that we can uh, absorb what we are expecting. Okay, so why are they doing this? Make, uh, makes a lot of sense. There are users coming in from here, from the top. They are from Italy. A lot of people now, 15 minutes into the show, nothing is happening here. Nothing. There is no voting open. Nothing happens. Then once they say on the right side here, once they say now, okay, the voting is open, please put your votes in. Everybody is going to go to that website here <laughs> that is hosted and it's going to vote for instance, through that website. It could also be that this is a, not only a website, but also an API for the apps and so on, right? And ALB is uh, load balancing here, a active load balancing, I think is the ALB, um, is short ALB for this. What this does is they are Fargate, they are hosting containers, web containers for the web app, right? So once they uh, the load gets high, they are going to spin up more instances here. They're going to spin up more containers in here with the web UI. And the ALB then sends people to the different to the different containers because then uh, um, yeah, then you can scale the whole infrastructure. And there are, depending on the policies and the load and so on, new, new ones get um, 
get brought up. Also, I think the, he I would need to look listen at it again. I think he said something about scheduled. Um, yeah, but that's the that's the general idea here. People are coming in, and the more people come in, the more is the back end here scaling. So. Fargate is being used uh, also to validate that the user is authenticated correctly and we perform a first check that the session has been opened before the user is transmitting the thought. If everything is okay, the thought is then transmitted on MemoryDB. MemoryDB is where the core logic of our application uh, is being served. We use a Lua script to make sure that uh, no more than one vote is processed concurrently. We check that the session, we double check that the session is open and we check that the users are not ex exhausted their votes for one specific session. Yeah, because the idea is you should not be able to double vote, right? So they are checking most likely your user or uh, email through the email or I don't know which exactly which data they are processing here, the IP address maybe as well. Although, the, yeah, I, I don't know, but the idea is once the session is open from from opened from the right here, the studio is opening the session, then people can actually come here, can vote. And then when, once the vote is getting stored into the memory DB, that DB is then checking is the, is the session actually open that person or that device who wants to now vote is that already registered here, has that already voted. And if not, it's going to take the vote. If it's already voted, then it's going to throw it out. Right. Pretty cool. I actually don't know about the Lua script here. Um, my guess is this is something like internal here. Um, uh, if everything is okay, we update the counters so that we can know who is being voted and what are the new limits, the new uh, remaining votes, and we transmit the results back to the user so that we can provide feedback. We can tell him if everything was okay. We can tell him is if uh, and how many votes he has left and uh, if there was an error or not. All yeah. Okay. All of this in under than 10 milliseconds. Wow. And how many nice. uh, consumers or viewers are you seeing? Well, during last final episode, we had five voting sessions and we collected more than five million votes. It is all possible. Five million votes and they, of course, they're not coming in like in, in, in 10 milliseconds, but each vote can be processed in 10 milliseconds. That means it's coming in. They are logging in here on Let's take the website. They're logging in on the website. They say vote, and then in 10 milliseconds it's checked. Is this here, um, is this vote correct? They register the vote and they tell it the 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 voter uh, that this is um, that his vote counted, or their vote counted, or the device's vote counted. Uh, this book will not regret shortcuts for binary counting. Oh no, thanks. Um, in 10 milliseconds yeah super cool but how do you monitor all of this well basically we create a lot of logs uh, both ALB and Fargate create logs uh, these logs are stored in CloudWatch and uh, this allows us to create dashboards to make sure that everything is go going according to what we expect and that we do have no issues mm -hmm. the same data is being streamed through so this is also nice because, you, yeah, as you said, like once you put it in CloudWatch, I'm not sure how they visualize this either directly in CloudWatch. Maybe they also add a kind of third party dashboard. Could be could be possible, could be interesting to have this. But that's the that's the nice thing about AWS and that you need that for every infrastructure. You need to have a way of managing the log files or managing the logs and th with this these are going to log into cloudwatch automatically cloudwatch is going to have everything and then you can work with it and now he, i think he's one he wants to explain here to the right uh, let me bring myself here to the left for this 
and we didn't have no issues. The same data is being streamed through Kinesis Firehose. Obviously, it's a lot of data, but we can allow to stream it to data firehose and persist it on S3 for long-term storage, for certification purposes, and to integrate this with our other data that we have with our other services. Basically, for analytics, right? That's the it's the typical thing that you have and that's why what i like about this use case the most now that that i see it um the cool thing is this here this is actually oltp here right the top part with the memory db transaction processing the transaction is the vote and the lower part here this part here or let's just say the right part here that is the analytics use case because you, the, it would be terrible to actually then uh, anal or use that database on top to process or to, to large scale do analytics with it. That's what they do. They, they say, okay, um, oh, that's just for the logs. No. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. So the above part is the transactional use case and the lower part here that is the old lab use case the uh analytics online analytics processing right it's with the data lake but it doesn't matter you could add here a uh, a tool like athena or something to it and then you have the data sql queryable and you can analyze data on large in large scale typical thing very nice uh, but they're not locking here the memory db data maybe they're also doing something where they extract or where they, they like do something like this here, uh, like this, maybe, or, or, or they do like an export here at the end of each session or uh, end of each show that they then export this here. And that, because then you have it in your, in your data lake and you can work with it. So pretty, a uh, pretty nice use case, for it, I think. Super cool. So now that the session's open, users are voting, and then we were able to visualize that. Now let's just say that the show ends. Yeah. Then what? So uh, as for the opening of a session, uh, the editorial team will close the session. The flow is the same as before. So the command will go through the VPN, will go to Fargate, then will go to MemoryDB, which will close the session so further votes cannot be processed, and uh, the results will be streamed back to the on-prem so that the conductor of the show can tell the public who was the, win the winner of the, this particular session or of the, the show. Okay. Hmm. They will stream that back. Why not just have a, a user interface here in Fargate that they actually can access? And how are they streaming this back? <laughs> Eh, that part is missing here. I would have guessed that they have then a, basically they have here another block uh, with a UI that is connected here to the memory DB and they can basically watch through here. And they can see the results directly online and not get the results back into uh, into the station oh, but meh. most likely they need the data back because they have here their they have here their graphs or their their charts so they need the data here to actually build this on the fly but how they do it we don't know we don't know. or if it's just a simple etl job then that takes the data, accesses the database and, and gets it back we don't know Thank you so much for going over your architecture. That is truly game changing. I are able to do that near real time streaming of that voting. So thank you. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for watching. This is my architecture. Thank you, everybody. All right. Pretty cool, right? I mean, you. that's why I like to watch these things. You can learn from these things, see how people use this, um, 
see what people are doing get you new ideas that first part with the uh, with the narrowing down to the location I actually didn't know that was something new um, yeah All right I hope you had fun um, any questions or should I go because that these two things were the main things that I wanted to chat about today I wanted to show you that um, that overview of the data of the God already forgot again state of data 2023 that airbyte created and i wanted to show you that youtube video yeah um i don't know that's that's so much for me um i'm going to wait a few seconds here if anybody of you has more questions then i'm going to answer these questions Otherwise, I'm going to go offline and do something else and before I actually leave the office and go home. Okay. Nothing so far then have a good one we see each other most likely i'm going to be back here tomorrow i'm going to um find something new for us to talk about if you have something that i should look at in the stream let me know on twitter again my twitter here uh, find me on twitter Andreas Kretz at Andreas K and then we are going to have a chat and I'm going to look at this tomorrow right so see you later <laughs>